So on the basis of examination, we can differentiate different types of shock like hypovolemic shock, cardiogenic shock, and septic shock. So what are the things that we need to see in a patient with shock? So these are pulse pressure, extremity temperature, capillary refill time, uh, body temperature, and WBCs count. So if a patient has a wide pulse pressure, has warm extremities, normal capillary refill time, and either has hyperthermia or hypothermia, and the TLC count is either more than 11,000 or less than 4,000. What type of shock is this? This is a septic shock. A septic shock is usually caused by gram negative sepsis or cytokines released from the bacteria which leads to the vasodilation. So it's usually it's the problem with the vessels. It's not a problem with the pump or it's not a problem with the volume. We'll discuss its management later on. On the other hand, if the patient has a pulse pressure that is narrow, the extremities are cold and clammy, capillary refill time is delayed. Temperature and WBCs count are normal. This can either be a cardiogenic shock or it can be the hypovolemic shock. No, the next step should be how to differentiate between the cardiogenic shock and hypovolemic shock. It's simple because the cardiogenic shock causes the fluid overload and hypovolemic shock causes has less fluid in the body. It's obvious. So we need to see the volume status uh, for the fluid overload or Dehydration. If the patient has the signs of fluid overload, like we need to listen to the lungs to differentiate these two types. Uh, for CREPS, any S3, any JVD, any peripheral edema, if these things are present, then it's definitely cardiogenic shock. And if these things are absent, if there is no elevated JVD, there are no fine CREPS, there is no S3, there is no peripheral edema, but there are signs of dehydration like dry mucous membranes. And this is hypovolemic shock. 